Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Absalom's rebellion is over, but it is going to be a little bit before David can reassert himself as king over all of Israel. Unfortunately, some of David's own behavior at the news of Absalom's defeat is going to jeopardize his ability to reclaim the kingship over Israel. Plus, there's going to be some rivalry between the uh, tribe of Judah and the other tribes of Israel over who is going to bring David back to Jerusalem as king. It was reported to Joab, the king is weeping, he's mourning over Absalom. That day's victory was turned into mourning for all the troops, because on that day the troops heard, the king is grieving over his son. So they returned to the city quietly that day, like troops come in when they are humiliated after fleeing in battle. But the king covered his face and cried loudly, my son Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have shamed all your soldiers. Those who saved your life, as well as your sons, your wives, and your concubines, by loving your enemies and hating those who love you. Today you have made it clear that the commanders and soldiers mean nothing to you. In fact, today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead, it would be fine with you. Now get up. Go out and encourage your soldiers. For I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will remain with you tonight. This will be worse for you than all the trouble that has come to you from your youth until now. So the king got up and sat in the city gate. And all the people were told, look, the king is sitting in the city gate. Then they all came into the king's presence. Meanwhile, each Israelite had fled to his tent. People throughout all the tribes of Israel were arguing among themselves, saying, The king rescued us from the grasp of our enemies, and he, and he saved us from the grasp of the Philistines. But now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, the man we anointed over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about restoring the king? King David sent word to the priests Zadok and Abiathar, Say to the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to restore the king to his palace? The talk of all Israel has reached the king at his house. You are my brothers, my flesh and blood. So why should you be the last to restore the king? And tell Amasa, aren't you my flesh and blood? May God punish me and do so severely if you don't become commander of my army from now on instead of Joab. So he won over all the men of Judah. And they unanimously sent word to the king, come back, you and all your servants. Then the king returned. When he arrived at the Jordan, Judah came to Gilgal to meet the king and escort him across the Jordan. Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Bahurim, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet King David. There were a thousand men from Benjamin with him. Ziba, an attendant from the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and twenty servants, also rushed down to the Jordan ahead of the king. They forded the Jordan to bring the king's household across and do whatever the king desired. When Shimei, son of Gera, crossed the Jordan, he fell face down before the king and said to him, My lord, don't hold me guilty, and don't remember your servant's wrongdoing on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king not take it to heart, for your servant knows that I have sinned. But look, today I am the first one of the entire house of Joseph to come down to meet my lord the king. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, asked, Shouldn't Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? David answered, Sons of Zeruiah, do we agree on anything? Have you become my adversary today? Should any man be killed in Israel today? Am I not aware that today I'm king over Israel? 
So the king said to Shimei, you will not die. Then the king gave him his oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to the king. He had not taken care of his feet, trimmed his mustache, or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, Mephibosheth, why didn't you come with me? My lord the king, he replied, my servant Ziba betrayed me. Actually, your servant said, I'll saddle the donkey for myself so that I may ride it and go with the king, for your servant is lame. Ziba slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God, so do whatever you think is best. For my grandfather's entire family deserves death from my lord the king. But you set your servant among those who eat at your table. So what further right do I have to keep on making appeals to the king? The king said to him, why keep on speaking about these matters? I hereby declare, you and Ziba are to divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Instead, since my lord the king has come to his palace safety, safely, let Ziba take it all. Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogalim and accompanied the king to the Jordan River to see him off at the Jordan. Barzillai was a very old man, 80 years old. And since he was a very wealthy man, he had provided for the needs of the king while he stayed in Maenaeum. The king said to Barzillai, cross over with me, and I'll provide you, pride for you, provide for you at my side in Jerusalem. Barzillai replied to the king, how many years of my life are left that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I'm now 80 years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or drinks? Can I still hear the voice of male and female singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Since your servant is only going with the king a little way across the Jordan, why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please, let your servant return so that I may die in my own city near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king. Do for him what seems good to you. The king replied, Kimham will cross over with me, and I will do for him what seems good to you. And whatever you desire from me, I will do for you. So all the people crossed the Jordan, and then the king crossed. The king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and Barzillai returned to his home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Kimham went with him. All the troops of Judah and half of Israel escorted the king. Suddenly, all the men of Israel came to the king. They asked him, Why did our brothers, the men of Judah, take you away secretly and transport the king and his household across the Jordan, along with all of David's men? All the men of Judah responded to the men of Israel, Because the king is our relative. Why does this make you angry? Have we ever eaten anything of the king's or been honored at all? But the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, so we have a greater claim to David than you. Why then do you despise us? Weren't we the first to speak of restoring our king? But the words of the men of Judah were harsher than those of the men of Israel. Yesterday, Paul listed the many different hardships that he experienced as an apostle of Jesus. Today, we're going to see that the Lord also gave to Paul some tremendous blessings. In fact, he was given a vision of heaven itself. Yet, to keep him from becoming conceited because of these very great blessings, the Lord also gave to Paul something that Paul ca calls his thorn in the flesh. We are not sure what this thorn in the flesh was, but it was something that troubled Paul greatly. He pleaded three times with the Lord that this would be taken away from him. But the Lord said, no, I want you to have it because I want you to rely on me entirely for all of your strength. And so Paul reminds us as well that we are strongest when we recognize our own weakness and rely entirely on the strength of our God. Boasting is necessary. It is not profitable. 
but I will move on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether he was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. I know that this man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which a human being is not allowed to speak. I will boast about this person, but not about myself, except of my weaknesses. For if I want to boast, I wouldn't be a fool, because I would be telling the truth. But I will spare you, so that no one can credit me with something beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, especially because of the extraordinary revelations. Therefore, so that I would not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me, so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and in difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced it on me. You ought to have commended me, since I am not in any way inferior to those super apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of an apostle were performed with unfailing endurance among you, including signs and wonders and miracles. So in what way are you worse off than the other churches, except that I personally did not burden you? Forgive me for this wrong. Look, I am ready to come to you this third time. I will not burden you, since I am not seeking what is yours, but you. For children ought not to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. I will most gladly spend and be spent for you. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? Now granted, I did not burden you. Yet, sly as I am, I took you in by deceit. Did I take advantage of you by any of those I sent you? I urged Titus to go, and I sent the brother with him. Titus didn't take advantage of you, did he? Didn't we walk in the same spirit and in the same footsteps? Have you been thinking all along that we were defending ourselves to you? No. In the sight of God, we are speaking in Christ, and everything, dear friends, is for building you up. For I fear that perhaps when I come, I will not find you to be what I want, and you may not find me to be what you want. Perhaps there will be quarreling, jealousy, angry outbursts, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. I fear that when I come, my God will again humiliate me in your presence, and I will grieve for many who sinned before and have not repented of the moral impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality they practiced. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.